It's a fuel that's becoming more and more popular, but is it putting firefighters and other drivers in more danger? Our TV6 reporter Tanya Spencer shows us how fire departments have to change their response when it comes to fighting compressed natural gas vehicle fires like the one that shut down I-465 yesterday. Compared to gasoline, it doesn't light up as quick, but when it does, it will burn rapidly. It was a fiery crash that literally stopped traffic. A ruptured fuel line created the potential for an explosion. Once Wayne Township firefighters realized this INDOT truck was powered by compressed natural gas, they had to step back and regroup. We try to look for placards on vehicles, but in the case of the truck fire yesterday, there was so much smoke and fire, we wouldn't have been able to see a placard on it anyhow. Alternative fuels are presenting new challenges and dangers for firefighters and drivers. Firefighters are now getting constantly updated special training to deal with ever-changing fuel sources, including hybrids that can pose a high voltage risk. Uh, we can go to the junkyard and we can practice cutting on vehicles all day, but those vehicles tend to be several years older than what we're dealing with in the cars on the street. So would we go out into the junkyards and find tons of hybrid cars or tons of natural gas powered vehicles? Not right now. Instead, they rely on guidebooks like this to tell them how far to stay back depending on the type of fuel. And they try to approach with caution until they know exactly what they're fighting. More and more fleet vehicles are going to compressed natural gas. In fact, 20% of new buses and trucks are CNG fueled. Reporting on the West Side, Tanya Spencer, RTV6. Fire departments in the U.S. respond to a vehicle fire every two and a half minutes. In yesterday's fire, the driver got out okay and no one was hurt.